Bob Woodward's bombshells. That's what we need to discuss today, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Woodward's bombshells. You know Bob Woodward, right? He's the famed Watergate reporter. He has a new book. It's slated to be released next week. And if the leaked passages are any indication, it will be groundbreaking. It will be a doozy. Woodward's War explores one of the most perilous periods of modern American history, starting with Trump's handling of the coronavirus pandemic, leading to the 2020 effort to subvert democracy, and then culminating with Harris replacing Biden on the Democratic ticket. I told you it's juicy. There's a lot in there. I haven't managed to get my hands on a copy of the book yet, but let me just tell you the three biggest bombshells that have already been reported. Number one, okay, this is the first one. The Russians nearly nuked Ukraine. Yes, you heard that right. In September of 2022, a top tier US intelligence report assessed that Vladimir Putin was so desperate about battlefield losses that he had started discussing the use of tactical nuclear weapons, about using nuclear weapons. We had heard like, you know, a little bit of that, but he goes into detail. The White House believed that there was a full 50% chance that the Russians would make such a move, that they would use nuclear weapons. Putin was about to flip a coin, right? How did we stop it, meaning the Americans? Well, President Biden told his people to, quote, get on all channels, get on the line with the Russians, tell them what we will do in response. Now, what would we do in response, right? That's the question. The defense secretary is Lloyd Austin, all right? The defense secretary stated that all the restraints that we have been operating under in Ukraine would be reconsidered. That's a quote. All of the strengths that we have been operating under in Ukraine would be reconsidered. Does that mean that we would nuke Russia in return? Look, I don't know, but I mean, it kind of sounds like it, right? I don't know. But wow, that's a lot. Imagine that. Okay, number two, Biden has bad blood with Obama. It's sad, but according to Bob Woodward, according to this book, it is seemingly true. That's what they say. When Biden dropped out on July 21st, you're going to recall that he immediately endorsed Kamala Harris, allowing her to con consolidate Democratic support and avoid party infighting. Why did Biden do that? Reportedly, it's not what Nancy Pelosi and other party elders wanted. It's not what they wanted. Well, Biden remembered what it was like not to get his president's endorsement. And I quote here. I think it probably harkens back to the way Biden felt that he didn't get that support from President Obama back in 2016. That's what Anthony Blinken said. That's according to Woodward. That he was disappointed. He felt that, you know, as his vice president, that's the normal and natural order. Biden felt betrayed by Obama. And so he was never going to let Harris feel the same way. That is bombshell number two. Bombshell number three. Trump sent COVID tests to Putin. Yep. I remember how people were hurting during COVID, right? Woodward reports that in 2020, during the peak of the COVID pandemic, Trump, quote, secretly sent Putin a bunch of the Abbott Point uh, of Care COVID test machines for his personal use. Now, remember that throughout 2020, Russia and the United States did exchange medical equipment such as ventilators, and such, right? However, this was a secret gift. Putin, who famously isolated himself over fears of coronavirus, told Trump on a phone call to keep the delivery of the Abbott test on the down low. So, quote, please don't tell anybody you sent these to me, Putin said to Trump, according to Woodward. I don't care, Trump replied. Fine. No, no, Putin begged. I don't want you to tell anybody because people will get mad at you and not me. They don't care about me. Okay, so Trump has told ABC News, he told him on Tuesday that that report is false. But who do you believe? Donald Trump or the man who broke the Watergate story? Thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure you hit the like button. It helps us with the algorithm. And also, we'd love for you to become a subscriber. So hit that button, too. We're live every day at 10 a.m. Eastern Time and 5 p.m. Eastern, so there's plenty of content for you to check out.